hypnotherapy process step number 5 rather step number 4 session number 5 pathogenesis we said the psychotherapy process is a seven step process step 1 case history step 2 psychological testing if necessary step 3 diagnosis step 4 pathogenesis step 5 treatment plan or therapy step 6 supervision step 7 termination so we will see today um, the step of pathogenesis in the last session we saw the step of diagnosis pathogenesis means genesis of pathology every pathology begins at some point and then develops over a period of time and there was a point before which there was no pathology pathogenesis means how did the pathology start and once it started how did it develop over a period of time obviously this calls for rigorous application of knowledge of psychoanalysis pathogenesis is the first point in the seven step psychotherapy process where psychoanalytic knowledge becomes extremely important of course psychoanalytic knowledge is also important in case history the way you ask questions it is also important in the psychological testing that you do but the most rigorous application let me rephrase it let me not say the first time but let me say most rigorous application of psychoanalytic knowledge in the seven step process is in pathogenesis the more schools you know better pathogenesis you can arrive at so let us look at how it is done once we are clear with the diagnosis according to dsm5 or icd or both we come to pathogenesis dsm5 and icd both of them are a theoretical so they don't go into pathogenesis we should be very clear about it that dsm5 and icd both are a theoretical and therefore they don't go into the pathogenesis of any sickness nor do they go into treatment plan of any sickness it should be very clear that dsm5 and icd are diagnostic manuals they don't go into the aspect of pathogenesis or treatment plan and this is important because there is no consensus with regard to any psychological illness that we can say with certainty that it is psychological in its genesis or pharmacological in its genesis or whether the best way to address it is to give medication or to do therapy or to do both our knowledge is very heuristic very approximate in nature on this point so dsm5 and icd don't go into pathogenesis they don't go into treatment plan they only give a descriptive picture of a disease and give us criteria to enable us to objectively diagnose a person with presence or absence of a sickness they don't go into why the sickness has developed how it has developed or how to heal it coming to psychoanalysis each school of psychoanalysis has its own understanding of pathogenesis for 
practically every sickness let us take a few examples let us say a person is suffering from delusion of persecution paranoia a freudian would do the pathogenesis and arrive at a conclusion that this sickness of paranoia delusion of persecution is because of repressed homosexuality and the dynamic he would give is there is a homosexual desire not acceptable so reaction formation comes in so the core desire i love you turns into i hate you Freudian uh, dynamic of paranoia is first there is a, psych, a homosexual desire, I love you, converted into I hate you, magnified into I will kill you, converted into you will kill me, and therefore the paranoia. So the Freudian conceptualization of delusion of persecution is rooted in latent homosexual desire unaccepted by the person. Klein does pathogenesis of the same sickness in a very different way. Klein says early life split being open and the bad breast having been attacked now the fear is the bad breast will attack back and this split remaining open and the bad breast attacking back the latent unconscious fear of the attack of the bad breast is what carry, what creates the paranoia Kohut gives a different explanation he says if the self is healthy enough even if the split is open the Self can provide adequate strength to the defenses to take care of the open split. But because the self itself is disintegrating, the smallest of split is converting into a crisis. So each school gives its own pathogenesis for the single sickness. Take the second example of depression. For Freud, depression essentially is, he gave two explanations of depression. First explanation was, when you lose a person to whom you are narcissistically related and for whom you have an ambivalent relationship, which means love and anger towards the same person. When such a person goes away, either by death, <coughs> either by death or by abandonment, there is no way to substitute that person by somebody else. So in order to deal with the loss of the person, what the mind does is the unconscious takes in the memory of that person, identifies with it and becomes one. In that process, the anger and the love both towards the same person now are turned on oneself. And anger turned against oneself results in depression. Second explanation Freud gave was, it was the predominant of death instinct and masochism. That the death instinct was very high, which could not be neutralized by the life instinct. And the masochism was very high. And therefore, the depression. Klein gives a very different explanation of depression. And Klein says, it is the loss of the all good object, the sadness of which results in depression. So we can see for each sickness, every school has its own explanation of the dynamic, what we call pathogenesis. Now, when we look at Lacanian school, Union school, they also have their own pathogenesis. 
so for every sickness we would have not less than 10 to 12 explanations within psychoanalysis as to why a sickness would occur obviously for some group of patients one particular school is true or in some patients more than one school also can be true so when we do pathogenesis we have to bring together knowledge of as many schools as possible so that we are able to do a consolidated pathogenesis and draw a tree of development of pathology how are they related take for example client talks about the phenomena of split of paranoid schizoid position and the depressive position in the 0 to 2 years very important if somebody has an open split and goes into the edipal phase freudian edipal phase with an open split it is very difficult to negotiate the edipus phase in a proficient way in a healthy way so if you go into the Freudian Oedipus phase, phallic phase, Oedipal phase, with a Kleinian pathology already on, the Kleinian pathology of pre-Oedipal period predisposes you much higher to develop the Oedipal pathology. Similarly, if the self formation has not happened well, and you go into the Oedipal phase, again you are predisposed So a pre-edipal pathology predisposes us to develop edipal pathology. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship that if you have pre-edipal, you will have edipal, but the predisposition is there. At the same time, we also have to bring together concepts from two schools. The Oedipal triangle is not only a triangle of sexual and romantic desire, it is also a triangle of object gain and object loss, the Kleinian concepts. It is also a triangle where a healthy self or unhealthy self will act in peculiar ways in that triangle. So the more schools we know, and more we are able to bring them together, a better consolidated pathogenesis we are able to do. And once we know what phenomena led to the beginning of pathology and how it has developed over a period of time, we see operation of one particular school in the beginning, operation of two schools for some years, operation of phenomena discussed by another two schools after some years, and that's the way it goes on. Pathology neither comes into existence nor develops based upon a single school in most cases. In most cases, it is a combination of many schools, in some cases, combination of all the schools. And despite using all the schools, we still can't explain it fully because obviously all schools put together still are able to explain only a small part of how the mind operates. So each school is limited in its own way. Every school has its strength and limitations, but each school is limited. All schools put together also constitute a limited conglomeration. So we have to use as many schools as possible to do a consolidated pathogenesis and plot out a tree of development of pathology because this is the base for the next step which is the treatment plan or therapy. Therapy is a function of 
pathogenesis. How you will do therapy is completely a function of how you understand pathogenesis of the problem. Questions if there are any, write to me at hvindia at gmail.com. Thank you.